Hey everyone, it's Adara and welcome back. In the last video, we built a custom blog post generator app and that app is really great for getting started, but what if we wanted a workflow to run on a regular basis that automatically generated blog posts for us on a schedule? To do that, we're going to use Retool Workflows. I'm really excited to walk you through Retool Workflows because this is really key to automating our businesses. This helps us take processes that run pretty much manually and allows us to define them and have them run as automatically as possible. So very excited to show you this way of thinking, which is creating a workflow. So let's go ahead and create our first workflow. And this will drop us into our canvas where we can see building blocks. Um, so the first two blocks we see here to illustrate a concept of workflow is the start trigger. This is the block that fires off the workflow, and this can be defined to run if you click on edit triggers here, either on a webhook call, this is every time we call the webhook, or on a schedule, say every day at 10 a.m. And what happens in this workflow is when the start trigger runs, it's gonna call this um, code block, and the code is gonna run and return this message. So to illustrate that, we're just gonna go ahead and run this workflow, and as it's running, this panel at the bottom shows us all our workflow runs, as well as what actually happened in each block. And this is how we can start to debug and define, um, identify how our workflows performed. So for building our automatic blog generator, we're actually gonna disconnect this and we're gonna connect a new block. So the main block types that you can choose from are resource queries, which is reading and writing from any of your databases and APIs that you've connected to your retool instance, a code block, which runs JavaScript and Python, completely custom code, a workflow, which lets you call another workflow, and an AI action, which hits your AI uh, LLM. In this case, it would be OpenAI and returns the result for you. In addition to those blocks, we're also given uh, logic blocks like filters, branches, loops, and responses. So all of these together allow us to create pretty much completely custom workflows that can run uh, in the background. So for our um, blog generator, we're gonna create three AI queries, and this is to illustrate chaining your queries together. So we're just gonna do the first query here, <clears throat> the second query, and the third query. And what we're gonna do after um, running these queries in parallel is we're gonna stitch the output of them and we're gonna use a code block to do that. And then we're going to send ourselves an email when that uh, code block is complete. And so to do that, we'll use the resource query and we're gonna use the retool email feature, which allows us to do that really easily without having to set up an email server. So. Now this is our whole workflow, start trigger, query one, two, three, sew all the queries together and uh, write an email when it's done. So far, pretty straightforward. So for each of the queries, uh, we're going to use the generate text action. And we also want to feed this workflow a topic that we're going to have our blog post be written about. So to do that, I'm going to use the um, parameters here to define the parameter uh, of our topic. So I'm gonna use single curly braces topic, and let's just say for illustrative purposes that the parameter is, uh, or the topic is coffee. Now uh, let's input the prompts that we've crafted. So for this, I will say, write me a blog post, or actually write me a quote about, and then I'll want to put the topic of coffee here. So the way I do that is I'm gonna reference that from the start trigger block. So I'm gonna use double curly braces, start trigger dot data dot topic. And it's gonna know what topic is because we've defined it here. Perfect. And then in this part, we'll say, write me the first part of a blog post about coffee. And then write me the last part of the blog post about coffee. Perfect. So now all I have to do is sew these three outputs together. And I'm gonna do that in the code block. 
So let's just define a blog post, which consists of the result of query two plus query three plus query four return blog post. Uh, apologies, we'll want query one, query two, and query three. Let's do that. And uh, let's just add um, some spaces here so that when we're reading it, it's not all just one big blob of text. <clears throat> Perfect. So our code block is complete. And now we're just going to want to uh, write ourselves an email at the end of this workflow that notifies us that the blog post is ready to review. So I'm just going to use my email here, say your blog post is ready for review. And then here in the body of the text, we'll just say code one dot data. Perfect. So that's the simple end-to-end uh, -end workflow. We're going to go ahead and turn it on using the webhook trigger because we're going to actually show firing off this workflow from an app. And let's go ahead and run the workflow. Now we can see the workflow is running and if all goes well, we should receive an email with our blog post. All right, so we can see that the workflow ran successfully. And what I like to do to check to see that everything is working as expected is I like to inspect each individual block and just see what the data is. So for query one, I can see that it created a quote for me, which is what I told it to do. That's great. Query two, I can see it started writing a blog post here. And query three, it started writing the conclusion. Finally, uh, I can see that I also got an email notification. Let me share the screen for that. All right, and we can see the email uh, was successfully sent here, and I did receive it on my phone. <laughs> I think that'll be the easiest way to show this, but it does say your blog post is ready for review. Great. So to build out this example a little bit further, um, there's one more case uh, I want to show, which is storing the blog post in a database so that we can reference it later. And that way it's not just like getting sent as a bunch of emails into our inbox. So we can do that in parallel uh, right after this code block runs. We're going to go ahead and click a new resource query here, and we're going to select retool database. So I'm going to navigate to retool database in just one second. Perfect. So if we go back to our main retool instance, we can navigate to retool database here. And this product gives us the ability to create a database or a backend with the ease of a spreadsheet, but with the robustness of actually querying this with SQL. So we're going to go ahead and create a new table and let's just call it my blog posts. And in this uh, table, I'll want to add a content field, and this will be where we'll actually put the content. And then let's just also add a created at field. And here we're just going to use created time. And so that way we can just get a sense of uh, time stamp and be able to reference when that blog post was actually created. For now, we're just going to use these two. But as you can imagine, we can add more columns later as this app becomes more sophisticated. So we're going to click create and it's now creating a new table for us to store our blog posts. Now we're going to be able to refresh in the um, query here and let's use the GUI and let's write this to the table, my blog posts. We're going to insert a record and in the change set for the key value pairs, we'll want to specify created at or apologies. We'll want to specify content and it'll fill out created at automatically. And in the content here, we're going to put code one dot data, and it will write our blog post to our retool database. And that's it. Now we've built a complete end to end workflow that can run uh, on a schedule or when we call it from an application, use prompt chaining to write a more nuanced blog post for us, send us an email and store that blog post in a database.